uh, got we recorded the last couple NSP things at Sunset Sound uh, in Hollywood, and it's like you walk in, and the albums they have there, they have uh, 1999, mm-hmm. uh, parts of Zeppelin IV, wow. a bunch of the Doors. There was uh, they have these reverb chambers for oh, uh, yeah. you know for for so you can get the kind of an echo sound, but for for from a real chamber, not just from you know. Waveform I watched a whole thing on like Vox about that. It's crazy where they were showing like before you could just put reverb into a computer like they would literally record you and as they were recording you they would put the recording into like a metal box and like yeah and play it through a speaker I to get like actual that. like that's, reverb and that's what they have they have in the so we, we recorded in the studio which was the first studio there and so it's from the 60s originally and uh the the engineer was like hey check this out and he takes like a panel off the wall and he moves it and he opens up the door and there's this big chamber the size of like maybe like a one Half a car garage, let's yeah. see, half a one car, half a one car garage, and there's a big speaker in the middle, and we all walk in. It's enough for like six people to fit, to fit in, and the guy goes, "Now this was here in the beginning, and the rumor is that Jim Morrison either gave or received a blowjob in this room." You could say that about any room that Jim Morrison walked into. Yeah, though. pretty much. Yeah, but the acoustics on that blowjob. Oh though. man, that blowjob sounded still amazing. Have- <laughs> Prime recording of it. That guy, he, that blowjob echoed for 15, 20 seconds after it was done. It was wild. Yeah, and they say on some nights if you're in there alone. <laughs> they did actually. They took us upstairs in this place. So it's like on the corner and there's apartments that are upstairs that were basically abandoned, it looks like, in the 60s. And there's still like people shit in this apartment, in these apartments. Wow. And so it really feels like something out of a horror movie because <laughs> there's very low lighting. They have all these tapes. So originally the Disney orchestra used to record there. And so they have all these like real tapes of stuff recorded in the, I think maybe even the fifties originally. And then it's like these kind of bombed out, haunted looking apartments, which you can only see <laughs> with a flashlight. I and it's love fucking it. creepy and awesome. And you just hear distant ancient blowjob yeah. sounds. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, that's all it is. Distant ancient blowjobs. Um, <laughs> that's the name of the episode. I was just about to. That's it. We already hit it. Uh, we should introduce our guest. I think. I think we're in it now, right? I've. I've. Feels like, like we're in it. I've fucked up the introduction two times in a row, so I really need you to do it. No, I think you're. I think that means you're due for a great one. I. I agree with that. You got to get back on the horse. I refuse to enable this. <sighs> Fuck both of you. Today, our special guest, a, a Star Wars man. <laughs> Killing it. I'm doing great. No, you're doing great. It's Anthony Carboni. Thank you. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Do you say the name of the podcast? Do you introduce yourselves? Does any of that happen? We in the haven't intro? been, although I saw someone say we should. We should probably do that. Why Try do that. You, Try that and see how it can feels. Can we with introduce that. each other? Oh, that's fun. Yeah. I think that'd be fun. But that's Brian, fun. Brian, you go yeah. first. I'll start. Uh, right across the room for me. No, is, start with the title of the show. Oh, sorry. The, thank you. See, this is what professionalism gets you. It is. God damn uh, it. The title of the show. Now, now that we're into hello, we're welcome to a show. Today. The title yes, of the show, the show is <laughs> "This Is My Podcast," which I make at home. The I worked very hard show. on it, so please be nice to me. <laughs> but, but genuinely, <laughs> but genuinely, could you please just be nice? The title of the show is "Late in Night with Brian Wecht," and right across from me is Layton Gray. Say hello, Layton Gray. Hi, that's me. This is my voice. Wow. <laughs> This Flawless. You're not gonna. You're just gonna say this is late. That's Brian Wecht over there. Hi, I'm and over Brian here Wecht. we have Anthony Carboni. All Hi. of this is staying in, right? No, this yeah, is good. Course. And look at that wonderful clipping. You're gonna mm. workshop oh, it. That's it's gonna, gonna be, be great. Amazing. I think half of those that you see are probably just gonna be my laugh. I have a bad laugh for Perfect. audio, and I yeah. just learned how to like clip it too. Ooh, so it's gonna it. be. We're we're in great shape, everybody. Yeah, we're doing it. We're all sitting here. We are. I think this is a record for late at night, and that this is the first podcast episode we are actually recording late at night. That's right. Yeah. Well, at eight p.m. The la- which hey. is the latest. It's the only night Don't for sure. Destroy okay, sorry. the it's illusion. 2 a, it's two a.m. and I'm it's drunk as shit. Yeah. <laughs> we just went on a crazy bender. We got right. stories. <laughs> oh my god, the things that went down. It's some wildness. Um, we were just inside, and Audrey was showing me her coloring book. Yeah, um, things got wild. <laughs> Okay, this yeah, that was this part toddler of was just like, check out my storybook about Neil Armstrong. And I was like, this is this is insane. If you called her a toddler to her face, she would kill you. I'm sure most toddlers would. You. <laughs> yeah. It, I'm she, a big girl. She yes, yeah. that's exactly right. Yep. yep, you got it. Yeah. So I used to be a I used to be a preschool teacher. Yeah. I didn't I was, know this. I was a preschool teacher for a little while. So children, you need to you need to call them Mr. You need to call them sir or ma'am. They really appreciate that. Mm-hmm. And, they have to show them their and the other, Yeah, the other adults think that it's really cute, so everybody wins. <laughs> hmm. 
They feel like you're not That's talking adorable. down to them and everybody else is like, good joke. You would actually call them sir and ma'am? Sometimes I would be like, excuse me, sir, what are you doing over there? Or like... <laughs> <laughs> That's adorable. Yeah. There's something very inherently funny about that. I wish I had done that. Uh, Audrey was coloring. Brian was trying to show me a book and Audrey like physically took my head and moved it oh, to yeah. look at Brian while he was talking to wow. me, which has never happened to me before. Oh yeah. Kids don't care. <laughs> oh, you just, will. You will pay attention. They're wow. just going to yeah, go for it. You're going to pay attention to my father and the That's cool right. thing he's trying to show you about this book that I've already forgotten what it was about. Yeah. No, she had a great time because anytime a new person comes over, so Leighton, she's seen a couple times, Anthony is is new to her, and that means she can bombard you with information about her life. Oh, I love it. I love He's- going into a, a just like, when you come in, a, a child will always show you their favorite things, yep. uh, and then take you to their favorite places in the house, and then if you do really, really, really well, they'll let you know, you could come for a sleepover. Yeah. <laughs> like, you could stay over, or like, you could come have dinner if you want, Yeah, and they're just like, if you want. And oh, that's how you know you're in with a kid. Yes. And then, well, the, uh, the other way is the parting hug. If you get a hug mm-hmm. at the end of the night, you've made it. Wow. I really got my hopes up this time because she ran for me, she like, did. arms out. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm on a hug level with Audrey. And then she went right past me and was like, <laughs> Mario, coloring book. <laughs> it was. You got got. It was yeah. so funny. I thought she was going for the hug, too. But she asked me to color Luigi with her. Yeah. So moving on up. It's a big step. Yeah. It's a big step. Anthony, are you uh, excited for the old Animal Crossing that's coming out? Oh, you know I am. Uh, we oh, were, you know I am. We were just inside and Rachel was asking, would, would Animal Crossing be good for Audrey? And like, I had to contain my screaming about how it is the perfect... I've never played it. I've never played Ooh. any Animal Crossings. Oh. Let me, uh, so there's certain, there's certain things that are just... They're just soothing and good. Like Terrace House. Early seasons of Terrace House. Ter- I don't even know what that is. It is, uh, it is essentially the Japanese equivalent of the real world, but okay. everybody is very kind to but one another. But it's just nice. Oh, wow. They make dinner together, and yeah. they're sweet to each other. They have goals. It's called Terra's House? Terrace. 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 Oh, like, they have a beautiful, yeah, like they have a beautiful terrace. Um, that is uh, either that or a Great British Bake Off. Like are just another thing I've never seen. Just soothing. You just sit down, and if you've had like a rough day, or like you're living on Earth in the current year <laughs> and you just watch these beautiful people try to help each other either bake or just live life and i and i love and, and animal crossing is the video game equivalent of that is this yeah. the appeal of so i've never really watched any reality tv stuff is this the appeal of reality tv it's just soothing um, no, no not usually no 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 it's no. very uh no there's those are anomalies i feel like like mm-hmm. terrace house and great british bake off are the pure ones and everything else is the depths of depravity of humanity you know Mm -hmm. in um event horizon where they showed the video of the crew going to hell and killing each other yes that's what reality tv is (laughs) i just watched i watched love is blind this weekend i don't know anything about that but i keep seeing people talk about is there a blind person in it no what What? it is is uh all of these single people it's a dating show it's akin to like the bachelor or something but all of these single people uh, have a month to meet someone and get married. Get married. In a month? 30 days to get married. And when you meet these other people that are living in this space, you don't get to see what they look like. You have to talk. You're you're both in these like pod rooms and you can hear each other, but you can't see each other. And within like five days, you have to pick out of these people who you're going to marry. Oh my God. And you, the only way to get out and see them is to propose. You can't see them before you propose. Man, I love Black Mirror. Um, yeah, it's very, <laughs> from the from the streaming platform that brought you Black Mirror. Um, but I do love, I do it's love fun. kind of like the science part of this where it's like, you can't see each other. You cannot be distracted. Right. You have to genuinely just speak to one another for a couple hours. How much deeper does your conversation go? How how much do you really communicate with each other? And they could have taken that road with it. They could have taken <laughs> any road with it. But instead, they were just like, here comes some trash. <laughs> I feel like it is relatively easy to be, and this kind of feeds into something we've talked about in the past here, voice hot, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it yeah. is, it's, I mean, this happens all the time when you listen to the radio. You're like, oh, yeah. you know, hear some NPR person. You're like, damn, that person's hot. Yeah, And it's just based on the voice. And yeah. not to throw any shade at anybody, but often NPR personalities are maybe not the hottest people in the entire world. Although, although over the last few although years, I feel like they're great. they're great. But I also feel like NPR people all have the same voice now. Mm-hmm. Like they mm-hmm. all have the same, like they all kind of have this like offshoot Ira Glass voice. That's right. <laughs> and originally he was the weirdo. Yeah. Right? But now they also, now they're like, so I went down to the... Uh, to the bagel store in question to see what was happening <laughs> to the neighborhood. 
And what I found was very surprising. <laughs> <laughs> like that's the dude voice. And then the, the lady NPR voice is all like, um, like kind of Shruti Pinamanani or, um, <laughs> you know, who, who has a very distinctive voice. Uh, what's her name? Uh, Zoe Chase. Which one is which one is she's she got do? a very Chicago kind of oh, voice. Yeah, you're allowed to sound like that. She talks like this a lot of You're the time. definitely especially if your she, stuff is more reporterish, you're yes. allowed to sound like that. Yeah, she's mm. where what is she on? This American Life or uh I can't even remember anymore. Uh but yeah, she's got a very uh distinctive Chicago voice. Yeah. Um I, I find I was thinking about this the other day. I love so much about NPR, but literally anytime it tries to be funny. It is actual hell on earth. It is <laughs> yeah. maybe the least funny thing I could possibly imagine. And there's some example uh, counter examples to this. For example, I love Jesse Thorne. Yeah, I think he is legit funny, and he, you know, he he gets it. But his his whole style and the whole tone of Bullseye and everything is very different from the rest of NPR. That's right. Programming. That's right. Because it's actually like cool, and it, it's not just pretending to be cool. It's actually cool. Right. But I, I, yeah, it's kind of like NPR funny is definitely just those old SNL sketches about NPR where yes. like the two women are like sitting behind and it's just like, yeah, we're going to make a, a funny, like we got a funny little thing here that we're doing. And it's just like, oh, it's like your, it's like your lamest professor that, throwing like a funny slide into it or like a meme into something. It's like, and this is how you'll remember how to do this. Dude, you have no idea how many physics talks I sat through where someone put up a New Yorker cartoon <sighs> and it was, yeah. You don't have to, listen, you don't have to be funny. Somebody told Thank people you. at some point in the history of public speaking that you need to be funny. You need to open with a joke or you need to get them in the middle with a joke or keep their interest with a joke. That's not true. If you're not funny, not just all. don't be funny. Why? Because why it's so much worse. Don't force it. Don't okay. force it. Brian, you were a professor. I was. Did you do that? Uh, yeah, but he was really funny, though. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's going to tell us that he was really funny. <laughs> Yeah. Like, and that's the problem is all the professors are like, no, I'm kind of the funny professor. I would only use, <laughs> when I was giving research talks, I would only use the dankest memes. Mm. But no, I, but a lot of them were Ugandan knuckles, which was really weird. <laughs> it was really weird and inappropriate. It and feels, people, were, people like, you, like, you got a lot of weird feedback about that. I feel, it feels ancient, weird saying. Ancient memes. But I guess... What, what the oldest memes are? What like ten years old at this What's point? What's the oldest? Meme? No, come on! Like all your base are belong to us. That's an ancient meme. Yeah. I, it's so old though that rage, I don't even rage comics are like ten years ago, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. But I feel like with the era of meme humor now, it's pulling on those again in a very like postmodern. Yes. Oh my god, we've gone from like mod modernist memes to postmodern memes. Yeah. Shit. Yeah, and the cycle just keeps speeding up and speeding up and speeding yeah. up. Oh, yeah, just like wild. faster and faster. And then it's like, oh, this was funny five minutes ago. I don't, what are we but talking about? But now I've about? seen three of them and it sucks. Yeah, yeah, totally. There were a bunch of academic specific memes, which I always enjoyed, like uh, scumbag analytic philosopher. You guys ever see that? <laughs> no. Look it up. No. Scumbag. <laughs> no, of scumbag. course we do. You know, it's a very famous. It's, yeah. Look, in my That's circles, what I love. I love when you get down to like a, a community that is clearly only a couple thousand people. Or like a Discord server or you something where they have their own jokes and totally. like you walk in there and you're like, this is a totally different language and yeah. I love it. Yep. Do you guys ever go on the shrimp raising subreddit? I do not. They, you know, they- Not ra recently. <laughs> raise little tanks of shrimp and it's a ton of memes about raising shrimp oh and like God. pH of the water. Wait, oh, I love it. Is this yeah. done now consciously knowing that other people are like lurkers are coming in and watching it? I don't think it's that. I mean, okay. Watch, so I just said watching Reddit, by the way. Yeah. Like, uh, as yeah. you do. Uh, it's Come really... home after a hard day of work, sit down on the couch and flip through some Reddit. <laughs> you say that in No, jest, I do. But, but that's what I do. <laughs> I absolutely like, do. What trash fire is happening on Am I the Asshole right now? Morning is, my, my morning is TikTok time when I get up in the morning. You're a TikToker. I sit, and I, I've never posted one and I never will, but I will yep. sit, I, I love to sit and scroll through. TikTok it has something algorithmically where uh, they've really locked it down. For the first 45 minutes you're scrolling through TikTok, it sucks. And then the moment you like, <laughs> and then the moment you like heart one thing, it's like, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay, okay, okay. Like in a way that is so good. Wow. Where if you genuinely just flip through TikTok for like two hours and heart things as you genuinely like them, mm -hmm. you don't have to try. You don't have to be like, oh, I kind of like this. I guess I'll heart it. No, just heart when you really have the feeling. Within two hours, TikTok is just a is just a curated vine for you. That's crazy. It's what, amazing. Was musically like that at all? Or no, it, it started off as like entirely lip syncing and dancing, right. and like yeah. lip dub stuff. Did you ever do musically stuff? God, you're, you're, you're too I, old for that, right? I mean, 
nobody's too old for it. I just okay. For, yeah. You're you're you older. Only, than the you're average. never old. You're never too old to go back to school. You're never too old to find love. You're never too old to be a TikToker. Yeah. And those are the three things that you need to learn if it's you learn true. anything. But I was never like when Vine was a thing. I was never on the app. I just saw the ones that everybody else posted, and that's yeah. kind of how it is. I've tried doing the TikTok like do the algorithm thing. I just don't need another thing to slot into the loop of like okay, I will check Instagram. Okay, oh. I will check Twitter. Okay, I'll check Reddit, and then I'll start it again. Uh, I don't need another. See, you know, I, I feel those. like specifically for Ninja Sex Party, so much of TikTok is musical still mm-hmm. that it would be smart for us to be on it. But I literally just can't handle another, like you, no. like you just said, another thing. It's exhausting. Yeah. I think and I people th- can play the music, of course, without us being on it. So uh, yeah, and I think the I think the um, the the incorrect assumption that people have is every time a new platform becomes huge, is that oh I got to get on this now too, right? And I think now it's there's so much going on where it's like, no, just like stick to the two or three you really love. Yeah. So like my morning, my morning is TikTok. At night is Reddit. I wind I, I wind down with a glass of sherry and some Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> like a true patrician. Yeah. What are your subs? Oh man. So I, I definitely this is a go good into good segment. We gotta do this as a segment. <laughs> what, what are, are your, your subs? subs? What are my subs? Hold on, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna write a theme song for what are your subs? What We're are your ask subs? Other people. Tell me your subs. <laughs> What are your subs? Tell me your subs. All right, that was it. I'm gonna. That put, was it. I'm gonna put it back. In Wait, cra- what have I checked recently? Books, RPG, made me smile. Aww. Aww. Um, I do. Be- I do belong to the Poppy community. Poppy, the like pop- the troll. Like, no, like the pop star. Really, uh, the YouTube pop star. I love Poppy, and I love the story of Poppy, um, including the controversy. I love. All of it. What's the, the poppy drama. controversy? Should, oh wait, should we not get into this right now? No. Um, okay. <laughs> this, is, this is like when I briefly mentioned Caroline Calloway, and then it was like, no, this is a whole. A whole so it turns out thing. poppy is a whole thing. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know that name, but I I looked it up afterwards, and I was like, oh, that story. So I yeah. did know the story. I just forgot the the name. The poppy. Name. I'm pretty sure I've never heard of. What are some of my, What are some of the big ones? Uh, I love. Um, I love Ask Historians. Oh, so good. Ask Wait, Historians is a- very good. Ask Kiss Historians? Yeah, that's, you it's got it right. Well, you did it you perfectly. You about ass kissing. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. you did it. Nailed it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's funny because they will ask the most nitty gritty detail about like, say I was buying a hat in 1962 and like, you know what I mean? Or like if I was in ancient Rome and um, I was, and I had a tiny garden but I wasn't. I wasn't growing things to eat them. I was just growing things. What would I be growing? And like, what were the rules about that? And somebody will be like, I know the rules about it. That's amazing. Um, comics, obviously, uh, casual conversation, but also serious conversation. Wait, is that the Ooh. full name of the? No, okay. two two Reddits. Okay, okay. Casual conversation is great. It's like people are just like, hey, you know, I had a real great day today, and like this happened and this happened. People are just like, yeah, bro, similar thing happened to me. It's just have a casual conversation with strangers. That's amazing. and then serious conversations is like, I'm gonna end it. I just like oh, my sure. mom's sick. Like this is what happened to me. Like everybody's letting me down, and people. And then you get like a lot of, it's okay, bro. Yeah, you're gonna be fine. Yeah, I, I, I'm I'm all up on Reddit. I got a lot of... It's delightful because we, you have to dial in the right. This is why mm-hmm. What Are Your Subs is good because you find the niche communities that's like, that's your zone. People are nice to each other. For me, it's like, you got to have the trash. So you got, am I the asshole? You have yep. relationships. Oh, I do love I'm I the asshole. You, I, it's the best. You relationships have- <laughs> I only do through relationships.txt on Twitter. Which oh, that just picks yes. the big, one, the big ones. Because otherwise, right. I'm just like, it's this too is much. too much. See, but for me, that account is 90% fake ones. Mm-hmm. I want the ones like sort by new, sort by controversial. I want to see those. But then you have our relationships, trashier cousin, relationship advice, yeah. which is has looser rules. So it's the wild, wild west. Mm-hmm. Um, r slash wedding shaming is a new one, Ooh. which I never thought I would be into, but it's just the full concentration of just like all of the, you know, mid thirties to forties women who are just reposting shit from like wedding Facebooks they're in. Oh my God. Truthfully delightful. And then I have like, you know, my interest ones like r slash mechanical keyboards is a yep. fucking scourge on my wallet. You, you are like, you're deep in it now, huh? I With just my- bought an Ergo Dox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't feel, I'm very excited for it, but I've got that and I got the SA Vial Bloom pre caps that I pre ordered and I won't get for like three months. What else did I get? I like that we were texting about this and you casually just dropped the word keeb and then Woo! had to. She's in it now, folks. <laughs> I had to learn what. Uh, it's it, real it, mechanical keyboard hours now, boys. 
It took got him. just a moment to be like, okay, got it. Yeah, but cubes. It, you know. Is that a thing you invented or that's what people say? No, that's what people say. What people yeah. say. You, you gotta log on to R slash mechanical well, keyboards. See, you I, get people talking I about that. Yeah, you gotta get yourself an and pro too. That's what I got. It's a good entry yeah. level key, ten key list. It's real good. You get yourself those nice pudding caps. Ooh, Ooh the pudding wow. caps are Ooh. so good. I just got some pudding caps. You get your sixty percent. I've seen people with the forty percent, and mm-hmm. aesthetically they're amazing. I don't think I could hack it. I no, mean, you I look at the forty percent so. like atriuses, like no, fuck, dude, that's no, too much. Couldn't do it. You get yourself. I'm I'm a I'm a brown switch person. I use a Me I use get around browns because they're like you still get a little clicky, but it's like a little more quiet than a blue. I would I would prefer to have a blue. I have never been so clueless. Blue as to is the what's clickiest. In a conversation. Oh, we got it, dude. <laughs> We're gonna keep going. See, so I, here's the thing. There's this natural. <laughs> there's this natural inclination. Everybody is a gearhead about something. I think, and if you yes. don't have something, you're a gearhead about. You will find something to fill that up. We all we are all natural tinkerers or builders or something of some kind. And so, like, I don't I don't care about cars. I I never I don't I'm not gonna build a fucking vape rig. I'm not like you know I'm not like one of these people. But like, man, I'll fuck around with my keyboard. Like, I'll buy a nice keyboard. I'll switch some stuff out. It's fun. You get a little tool and you pry it off. It's like it's real so zen. Satisfying. And I guess this is what Lego does Building Lego. For people, yes. right? It's like, it's a way, it's being a prescribed tinkerer where you don't actually have to be creative. And I'm not, there's not a knock on people who love Lego, right? But it is a way that you can, if you just want to follow the fucking manual. It's a tactile thing. thing. Yeah. It's thing. knitting. It's yes. whittling. It's, yes. Yeah. It's just this thing like, I like having something that my hands are doing that occupies a specific part of my brain. While I can like, I can also watch TV or I can watch a movie mm-hmm. while I'm tinkering with my keyboard or building Legos. And so it's kind of just like putting me into that Zen state that I need at the end of the day where it's like, my hands are busy. My mind is busy. This is fun. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know? And for keyboards, it's, it's especially great because, you know, they're like, oh, if you're going to spend money on a thing, spend it on something that you use all the time, like a mattress or your shoes. I'm going to argue keyboard is one of those things that's very true if Definitely. you do any sort of creative thing you're in front of a keyboard all day this is i'm proselytizing i'm, I'm please god get into mechanical keyboards get into it well get on mass drop get yourself something real cheap to start off wait with. for two months okay so there's a keyboard that i recommend <laughs> to everybody okay it's on amazon it's spelled okay the way i say it is diarrhea that's not how it's spelled it's mm-hmm. d-i-e-r-y-a it's a 60 percent and pro 2 knockoff for half the price you can get brown switches, you can get blue switches, you can get red switches. I'm going to recommend brown switches for a starter. Yep. Um, they're like, I, I think universally, like everybody really likes them. And if you like those, you can go onto the Gatrions or the uh, like Cherry Clears, which are what I got for my Ergodox and I'm excited to try. Um, but reds are like a little bit more gentle. Um, they don't have like a bump or anything. They just kind of tap. If you're spending eight hours a day on something, and I think most of us at this point in our lives spend eight hours a day on some computer. For sure. And if yeah. you're going to spend eight hours a day on your computer, like, trick it out. It might as yes. well trick look it out. sick as fuck. And Get some novelty keycaps. Yeah. And Make it look what? like you. Make it feel like you. I'm also going to put in a plug. This is just me being the responsible old man dad. Yeah. Ergonomics, baby. Oh, for sure. you got to, like, dial up that ergonomics. Nice chair. It, I said dial nice up. Keyboard. I meant dial in. I'm using slang term cor- cor- correctly. Uh, like if you're you, even a small difference in how your posture is or how your setup is can have a uh, multiplier effect, bad stuff go on as, as you use it more. So it's so important when you're thinking about your keyboard to Thanks do Thanks for that health tip, dad. That's what I do. I appreciate yeah. it. You know, yeah. I, have, I have a young daughter that I yeah. need to teach computer safety. I'm, uh, I'm spending a lot, uh, too much money on key sets and, uh, and, uh, D&D dice. This is Tabletop like... Tabletop dice. I, I love finding the really expensive hobbies that you yeah. like can't stop doing. Mechanical keyboards is one because once you've got it, you cannot get rid of it. And you're like, well, I have more keyboards than I have computers, but what if I got another one? Yeah. Um, and then same with like Criterion Blu-rays, which yeah. I need to stop fucking buying. So I can't do I can't do it anymore. And I used to have such, a, such an expansive set of Criterion. Um, and now I'm just like, but not all of them are 4K yet. Yes, I've already bought a true. lot of these movies on DVD and then Blu-ray, and I'm just like, you mother, I, I'm not doing it. I'm I not just buying don't them want, again. I don't want more stuff. I I'm, I'm kind of done with like getting more stuff. We have some because I have a child. Yeah, so much of my house is just pointless bullshit. I have so stuff. much stuff. I have so like, much stuff. And stop. I mean, that's kind of bragging if you think about it. Yeah, kind of. But I mean, here's what's up, Lo. I like <laughs> it is kind of bragging. I think the thing with with the Criterion movies now is just that I know 4K is coming and then I know something else is coming. Yep. And like it's it's happening so quickly now 
And with the criteria, like the Criterion app is actually very good. It is. I just canceled my subscription because I own too many now. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to pay for both of these. I want to own fewer things, but the things I'm okay with owning a lot of are books, VHS tapes, and Criterion Collection. (laughs) Now the VHS, I saw you post a VHS tape today (laughs) and I was like, this is, uh, this is problems. Cause yes, but can I tell you a secret though? Yes. Actually, I'm going to, we're going to talk first and then I'm going to reveal my secret. Okay. Um, the VHS thing is is strange to me because it's like my friend AJ does this too, where she'll she'll find copies of movies she really loves on VHS and she'll buy them and they play them on like a they have a v, like a VCR combo like you have too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, this is this is cute and this is cool, but like number one, it looks like shit already and it sounds like shit already. Which and is then, the, which is why you love it. Which yes. is kind of kind of what you love about it. But then every time you watch it, you know that you're like counting down to the final time you <laughs> yep. can watch that's a, that's a, <laughs> which is the weird thing about vhs and cassette tapes yeah for sure. yep this uh, is true but so then here's my secret i started buying mini disc players recently <laughs> <laughs> god damn it <laughs> when was the last mini disc player manufactured 2000 and actually they still make they still make them really? in japan because it took off in japan yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they still make specialty ones in Japan. I don't think they make like Walkman style ones anymore, like pocket ones. But you can still buy like one for your like rack mount stereo Fuck. system, and they're expensive. They're like they're like two thousand dollars. Do they still make things on mini disc? No, I would. Yeah, no, because they... you'd be an actual crazy person yeah. if you did that. Well, because it doesn't sound great. I mean, it sounds fine, but it's like it was pre MP3. It's really small. It's small. You know, it, it's got such a. I think the reason I did it is I had always wanted one, and then like six months ago, I was like, I could have a mini disc player if I want. I'm a, I'm a grown up. Yeah. I've always wanted one. Let's see how much they are. And I found like a cool like disc man that looked like it you know, looks real cyberpunk. It looks like. It looked a bit like it looked like a mix between something Deckard would have had in Blade Runner and like and like Shinji's S Dat player from Evangelion. Did you ever play the Neuromancer Apple II game where you had to put little discs in a in a thing? No. Okay, you should play it. Old man. It, it had soundtrack by Devo. Ooh. And you know, like Apple IIe, eight bitty, whatever wow. soundtrack. Okay. Uh, really formative computer game for for me when I was growing up. Okay, I, I, I have this very vivid memory of you had to you were kind of fighting AIs and stuff like that, and you had to stick little discs in a in a thing it. with a password. Yeah, somebody just re released. Uh, there was like a huge project to restore and make available and and able to run the Blade Runner adventure game. Oh my god, I would love to play that and, again. And somebody, I think yes, somebody, please. they finally put it Why? out, and it's beautiful. And it's really, really beautiful, oh and I God. never had a chance to finish it when I was when I was a kid. Nineteen eighties uh, all text adventure games are the very core of my being. Uh, Infocom games were oh. the be all and end all of my life when I was thirteen. I didn't do a lot. Of, I didn't do a lot of text things or or oh, or muds. I, I did think, them all, uh, but I did get into like Sierra games. Were like oh, the yes. first real like adventure games. Manhunter. Did you play Manhunter? I did. I, well, I had to go over to an older friend's house to play Manhunter. Yeah, it's hey. pretty. Some it fucked up like, shit happens. In Manhunter, 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 Police Quest, and Leisure Suit Larry. I had to go over to some big kid's house. Yeah, yeah. Le- Leisure Suit Larry is like the one that you're parents would not there was a, infocom actually had an uh adult like a leisure suit larry style all text game called leather goddesses of phobos <laughs> where you could it was like kind of a 50s sci-fi sort of thing but this, it was this like feels sexy. laser it's targeted just, at my it's brain ju- <laughs> it's just an ao3 account that occasionally asks you a question <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> but you could put in in the beginning if you wanted like the tame version or the hot version. And Ooh, where they use the real <laughs> sexy words. Yeah. Well, it's like the ASCII it. art of like titties. <laughs> yes, that's exactly right. Which, wow, believe me, amazing. I looked at my fair share of when I was twelve or thirteen or whatever. That of course, was. of course. Yeah, yeah. For yeah, early like the early internet porn for me was definitely like downloading one GIF. Oh, of course. And it was taking ten minutes, and somebody's dad was coming home, and you could hear like the garage door was like, "Go, go, go! Do we do we abort? No, we don't abort. It's been twenty minutes. Or we have to get this picture. You're trying to download something, and someone else picks up the phone. That's what I remember. And it's you're like, "Fuck!" Yeah, can't relate. No, no, of course, of course not. Uh, I think we should move on to some advice. What do you guys think? Uh, yeah, I'm ready. All right. Hi, Layton. I mean, right off the bat. I'm the one reading this, but okay. Uh, you can call me Sam, and my pronouns are they, them. I'm 29 years old, and I have a huge crush on a girl. Let's call her Libby. 
She's about the same age as me, but I live in LA, and she lives in Canada. We've known each other through online fandom spaces for a few years, and we chat on Discord, too. She's an artist, and my main way of showing affection is by commissioning artwork from her when she's available, and generously over-tipping whatever price she sets for her art and time, because that's easier for me to do than telling her how I feel. She's more than just a great, hard-working artist. Libby is kind, incredibly funny, sweet and witty, and super cute, too. She's also one of my biggest inspirations to finally get back into making art myself after a long hiatus. I hope she doesn't see our relationship as simply just an occasional artist-client work contract, because we talk about things beyond just art I want a commission from her. I want to tell her that I value her for more than just her art. I like her more than just a friend. Can you help me out? Thanks. So once again, that is Sam, they, them. This is interesting, and it's a little tricky, right? Yeah. Um, Because we know that you chat. We know that you commission art from from her. We don't know how much you chat, how in depth it is uh, outside of that. But it does it does sound a bit like the impetus for the relationship is the commissioning of art. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it sounds like primarily a business relationship, which which, which do I don't want. It's fair to say, it, y- yeah, given what yeah. we know in this email. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to over minimize it. You know, no, of could, course, yeah. they could they could be you know casually friendly, or they could be they could be friendly. Totally. Um, you know, there are fr- there are friends of mine who are artists that I commission things from when they're available. But um, this sounds this sounds more transactional than I think. Yeah, Sam thinks it is. If Sam's saying that they're over tipping and commissioning a lot in lieu of expressing feelings, like there's inherently a power differential Very in the big. way this yes. is working. Oh boy, Sam, I feel for you with this one. It's a <laughs> yeah. tough situation. Well, because because if that's how you're expressing, if that's how you're expressing affection. The trick is. You are expressing your affection in a way that requires the understanding of the subtext of the action. That's the trick, right? Yes. Because all that she's seeing on her end is the commission and the payment and the tip. The subtext that this is how I'm showing my affection because I'm a little I'm a little nervous and I don't know how to express it verbally or in a written way. That it's not going to be easy to see that from the outside yeah i right. totally we, totally we, agree and she i i again not knowing the level of friendship there's a chance either that she's just like oh this is my good friend who commissions me or that it's like this dude is a really good uh client i guess and i make money through this person and that's why this is hard yeah it's yeah. tricky and you know so what we're, we're what we're going to need you to do is just send all the chat logs from the past five years, <laughs> all of the so art, can, all the art, the, and just. But no, there there are things that you know about this dynamic that we don't know. Yeah, and, and I think there is a there's a there's a thing that I think is going to come up in pretty much every. <laughs> I haven't looked carefully at all the emails, but uh, what I suspect is going to come up the universality of crushes is always: Do I say something at the risk of? losing slash changing everything. That is always the dynamic with a crush, right? And that's the question here. And the thing I think we need to ask ourselves is what is potentially going to be lost if Sam goes forward with their feelings? Yeah. Mm. Is and this is this somebody that is more valuable to you? Because you, you, you've, you've already said that there is, gosh, there's a continent between the two of you. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And you, you basically, you mostly interact uh, online. What's more valuable to you? Is it more valuable to you to have this person as this friend that you can talk in this this person who's kind of inspirational to you and has has got you back into making your own art? That sounds like a very valuable relationship in and of itself. It's so hard. Having long distance relationships is just hard in general. It's especially hard if you've never really met. And it's certainly not impossible. Mm-hmm. Certainly plenty of examples of people who have, you know, hit it off and then whatever, ended up together in, in the long term just based sure. on long distance internet stuff for a while. But I, I do think if there's any chance of actually being in the same physical space in a low stakes kind of way, that would be amazing here. My, my Going back to like, what should we do thing? I, I'm not necessarily going to say this all the time, but uh, my general advice for crushes is say how you feel and do it in a low pressure. And I'm not, this is not a reflection on Sam, in this case, this is a reflection on people, especially typically men in general, say it in a low pressure, non-creepy, public 
ish kind of way where the person that you're talking to feels like they can get out if they, if they need to. Yeah. Um, what you don't want to do is like corner someone in a hotel room or something like that. Like I, I am almost always for crush. It's going to be on the side of say how you feel, uh, high risk, high reward type situation, because the, the thing that is the absolute worst is at least to me, letting something fester for a long time mm-hmm. and then living with the regret of never having having said anything. Oh, because like half the time they're always like, oh yeah, I was sort of into you. Then it's like, fuck, why didn't I say anything? <laughs> fucking percent. That does happen. Yes. That does happen. But I, I'll, I'll say this. The other thing that happens when you're when you hold on to these things for a long time or the nature of crushes is kind of, it starts off very sweet and then gets kind of pining and like, is there a way to say cute obsessive? It's, it's, it's cute obsessive. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Like yes, totally. It's a harmless kind of, it's an infatuation. The word but, I'm looking for is infatuation. But it's like a fantasy that you're feeding. Right. Um, and, and that's always the case with crushes, especially. You're creating on, a version of that person in your mind. Yeah. It's like you have a Mad Lib and you have the blank spaces of this person. And as you get to know them better, they fill those in. But when they're a crush, you can fill those in with whatever the fuck you want that makes them look like just the coolest person. That's right. Especially when you don't actually have to be around them all the time. Yes. Yeah. And I think that's also a big case with like internet stuff, especially in what seems like might be happening with Sam is like, you can have the realest, most deep, intimate relationships over the internet. I think some of the strongest bonds I've ever made have been through the internet. For and sure. I fully stand by that. But you do not have the full picture all the time. Yep. And that is a very different mode of communicating. Um, yeah. Uh, and I would, and I would say that, um, with one of these things that, that will probably come up again and again is like, how do I do it? What do I do? And the, keeping in mind that it needs to be kind of casual and low pressure is, is also keeping the asymmetrical nature of a crush in mind. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This, this thing is bouncing around in your head until it has like huge echoes, right? Yeah. But this person is not aware. Nine times out of 10, this person is not aware. So That's as right. you're building it up bigger and bigger in your head, the big reaction because there's going to be, I have a feeling there are going to be a couple people that ask about making the big gesture, yeah, the grand gesture. Don't do it. In most psychological and emotional situations, people will tell you the grand gesture is not great. Yes. Um, it doesn't matter how many movies you've watched, how many fucking, how many fucking beautiful anime that you've watched. Or fan fiction. Or fan fiction. Fanfic, fanfic you've read. loves pining and then a oh. big grand gesture. Yeah. Big grand I gesture. Make. I show up at her job. <laughs> I go, I fly to Canada. Uh, I, I play, I hire a band and we show up. No. Dude. Very normal uh, thing. No. I think the, the biggest example of this for me is the public proposal. Yes. <sighs> which I, I get it. Well, and the grand gesture is also very reflective of, the grand gesture is about you, not about them. That's such a good point. It's like very absolutely selfish in a way, especially because you have created a box of what you want their reaction to be, mm-hmm. and they have no idea what that box is, and then they just kind of have to deal with this thing that you dumped on their lap with like the most pressure. Yep. And once again, we want to say that this this stuff is not specific to Sam. Yeah, we're kind of yeah. digressing into general. Stuff we're kind here. of digressing into general because I, I do have a feeling we're going to get some. There are going to be some common themes. That's right. There's but I like think a in terms- dozen in those, and they all cover like the same three issues. Yeah. And I think I think <clears throat> what we're what we're saying to Sam is try to try to declare it in a low pressure way. I agree, and I would actually I'm gonna I know we're kind of, that would be a great place to stop, but I'm gonna say one more thing because I think there's something very important. <laughs> First of all, how dare haven't. you when I put a button on something? No, I know Anthony. <laughs> it was a good I button. It. I put a, a button good. on it. I get it. You but son I, of a. What I do is I rip buttons off society, man. He's, he comes from the improv asylum. It's, what it's I one do. of those edgy, edgy jokes again. It's, Damn. So, but he's like the Joker of comedy. It's just. I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave. <laughs> to be fair, there's no the. It's just I'm Joker of comedy. Mm. Um, what cleaner. I was gonna say is something that I think is <laughs> that's right. The thing that I think is really the most unusual about this thing is the paying. Yes. And yeah. that's the power dynamic, Layton. You were alluding to. I'm gonna say. Stop paying for stuff for a while. I don't know how much money you have. So if, especially if this is uh, putting you in the red, spending money on this person's art, then you absolutely have to stop it. I would say as a general rule, once you've commissioned enough art from someone, and what's enough? I know this is kind of a a fuzzy, fuzzy 17 pieces. It's universally enough. Okay, great. No. Got it. (laughs) No. Um, It sounds like you've been doing this for a while. 
I'm going to advise you to stop buying, stop commissioning and tipping on the art, at least for a little while and see what happens. Yeah. Actually, I you know what? I think that's going to be I'm a glad really you crucial the button benchmark. Off. I'm glad you ripped the button off because that's important. If you're yeah. going to go for it, you cannot do it anymore, I think is yeah. my hard line. 100%. Um, yeah. You make a choice. You either keep getting the art and you stay friends or you say something and you stop. That's right. Because once, I mean, you know, I'm sure there are counterexamples. I love that word uh, to this. But once you're in a romantic relationship with someone, you do not want that to be a business relationship yeah. as well. People do it. Of course, it definitely succeeds sometimes. Sometimes it fails horribly. But starting out a relationship, I mean, that's really what the crux of this is. It's, it's transitioning a business relationship to a romantic relationship. Yeah. And that happens, but at, it's Can hard. I get the barista to go out with me is what you're doing right now. <laughs> that, that is, Can you get the friendly barista to go out with you? That's exactly what um, it is. Yeah. And, uh, but online. Uh, but online. And one, th- one thing that I, w- that I would add to that is if this does not go the way you want – Please, please, please do not bring up the amount of money that you've given no, this person. No, absolutely do not, not. That money does not entitle you to anything, even though you see it as a, a way of showing affection. They see it as you paid for my art and services. Even if you overpaid and they know that you overpaid, you do not bring that up. That is not a bargaining chip for you. 100%. Yep. In talking about this and realizing what a messy situation it is, um, don't do it. <laughs> I, by, really? Be specific. Like, you don't say anything is what you're saying. Don't right? don't say anything to this person because you are rendering goods and services. Think about from their perspective. They're looking at this like this is a person I'm friendly with, and they are a source of income for me and steady income. You go to them and say I have feelings for you, and that's not reciprocated. That's like fuck. I think I just lost a source of revenue. Like it is so inherently messy because of introducing the money aspect into it. And, you know, there are high risk, high reward situations. And then there's just like high risk. And this feels very high risk and not much return. Did I lose yeah. the heart no, of what the fuck I was no, saying? But, but, but it did make something occur to me, which is if Sam is, Sam, Sam is buying this art because they do love the art that this person makes, but they are clearly buying more art than they normally would and it, tipping it more than they like normally that, yeah. would. If they don't get to express this, would they naturally just stop spending the money over time anyway? And then what, is, I mean, there is a messy moment that could potentially happen, but I feel like that income is going to be lost either way. That feels very true. Yeah. So it's a tough situation. I think I agree with Layton. Probably not the best move to say anything here. Yeah, and it's, you know, I, this is, again, a thing that will come up a lot. Is like crushes go away when they're happening. It yes. feels like the biggest feeling, especially if you're young or a teenager. It feels like the biggest, most intense mm-hmm. feeling. But there will be so many of them, and you will yeah. get rejected so many times. You will have plenty of people who are super into you, and you do not reciprocate, and it sucks. Like, it is a universal human experience, death taxes, mm-hmm. awful crushes. I have, You know, I have I have, like, seven crushes going at any time. And I think it's like... Real? Yeah. And I think it's just because I know a lot of people who are really wonderful. You know, I know a lot of people who are really wonderful, really talented people. And I think you should have crushes on most of your friends. Yeah. Especially when you're young. Yeah. And I think... Because I think it's a form of just affection and admiration, right? And I think if a crush feels... I think the problem is if crush is just on one person and it's taking up a large amount of of your brain and your thought process and your day you really need to look at what you're missing in your life that makes you fixate on one person. That's 100%. Yes, true. and you know what sometimes what you're missing? Mechanical keyboards. Mechanical <laughs> keyboards solve it all. You all get right. those good pudding caps. All right, we're going to move on to the next question. We're going to move on to the next keyboard that I recommend, this is which a is really good question. Anthony, okay. I think you're really going to like this. Okay. Brian, I saw him pick up this email and then just look at me knowingly, um, which is why I pulled this one out of the stack. This is we, maybe my favorite question we've ever gotten. Well, there's a, okay, a lot of these are good. Thank you yeah. for your emails. Hi there. My name's Leah. She, her, 19 years old. And people think it's totally weird that I have a crush on Teller. Yes, the magician. I've gotten a lot of beef like this about many of my celebrity crushes over the years, and it's very frustrating. How should I deal with the haters? Thanks. Fuck the haters. (laughs) Fuck the haters. haters. Teller rules. Teller rules. And like, what I love about a crush on Teller is it is- Especially from a 19-year-old. From a 19-year-old is this is a crush entirely on 
on like a silent protagonist. Yeah. <laughs> this is a, you this know is what? a crush I, on a silent protagonist. I that's really very talented. like the way that that's very appealing to me. Yeah. yeah. You you can put your own words into Teller. Whatever yeah. you want Teller to say. How do you imagine Teller sounding? He, you can you can Ooh. find clips you can of find, that speaking. No, but sure, I'm wondering, like, I mean, I know that they can't the, answer. It's the mystique. I know that they can't answer, but I I want to know what they think Teller sounds yes, like. Yes, actually yeah. follow in, up. in their mind. Who's the weirdest crush you've ever had? Like, because we've all had, here's the thing, but my answer to this question is, fuck the haters, have weird crushes, yes, weird absolutely. crushes are great. Weird crushes are the best kind, because you have to have the taste of like, you know, when it starts from their personality mm-hmm. and their, their, uh, uh, their, their zhuzh, you yeah. know? Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's a celebrity, like, you're not going to be in a situation with Teller where you're going to like act on this in any way. No. Have as many fucking crushes as you want on weird people in movies and TV. Hey, if you can that. find posters of Teller, put them up. You know what Seriously, I mean? Seriously, I'm so into that. Like, listen, want to fuck Willem Dafoe? Want to fuck Steve Buscemi? Do it. Yes, now. Leah, I'm with you. I got you. I've been very excited to watch uh, my number one celebrity crush for like most of my life has been Bill Hader. And nobody was on this train. Everybody made fun of me. Fucking really? it comes Everybody's out. Everybody's on that hater of, train now. Everybody loves him. And it's like, you motherfuckers. It's I was, that, it's I was that here one, before it, you. It's that one, two of it and Barry. And oh, now everybody's ooh, on dude, board. Ooh, Barry, Barry is Barry. the best. Barry? Barry? Barry. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't see Leighton Power posing every time she said Barry. She was, it was a different, like, it was literally a different bodybuilder pose every time she said Barry. That Barry and it was is, amazing. You was activated, amazing. like, my sleeper cell, like, the rest Barry. of this episode. Barry just, is one of my favorite things I've ever seen on television. It's so it brilliant. Is, I, it's in my it's top. It's amazing. It's in my top three with Twin Peaks. And yep, absolutely. Mm, question mark. I don't know what else. Twin anyway, Peaks. Barry, please fucking watch Barry. Please watch Barry. It's but the best show. We have to answer his question. Weirdest cry. I mean, I guess you kind of answered that with. I've said it. Bill Hader. I've said a lot. No, Bill Hader is the weirdest weird. one. It's he's hot and he's super talented and he can direct and he can write and he can act, and he just. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what's what. What is weird? I don't know. Just uh, just any crush where you where you where you told your friends about it and you could be from any time in your life and they were just like they were either like who or why. And I think when I was, I, you know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Where you say the name and they go, who? Or you say the name and they go, why? I definitely, I don't, I mean, I guess this does count as a crush, but I dated a girl for a while in college. <laughs> My friends were like, why do you think she's attractive? That's different. That's, That's different. different. That's because right? you know them. I think this automatically disqualifies anybody you actually I th- know. Okay, okay, good, good, good. I think it has to be like, what's your weirdest, maybe not celebrity, but like public figure. Yeah. Or, or animated character. Oh, so. Oh, well, that I can trace. Yeah, I can thing. trace animated character because my first ever crush was. Ooh, I wonder um, if I can guess this. Was. Guess. Is it a furry? Uh, no. I, is it a Looney Tune? No. Uh, it's not anthropomorphic. Um, is it Maid Marian? And, oh, it's not anthropomorphic. It's not anthropomorphic. Fuck. Uh, the, the little depression blob in the pills for <laughs> depression medicine. <laughs> It was. Um, I don't know. Why that's my, that's, that's mine. I can name. I can name three out of the gate. Okay. Um, that only one of them. Only one of them is really influential on like my entire type. Mm-hmm. But um, it started with uh, Penny from Inspector Gadget. Oh, okay. It, cool. Not a crush for me, but very cool. I had Penny Valid. from Inspector Gadget. Inspector Gadget was a big one. For um, me. Then there was the. Um, I don't remember the name of the character, but it was the girl from the Mysterious Cities of Gold. Which was a great. Oh, cartoon. that! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and Fuck. then the third one was, uh, and this is the one that informed everything going forward, was the Baroness from GI Joe. <laughs> oh fuck. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> it's just all been dark, bespectacled goths ever since then. Uh, it really uh, does. There's so much like hot goth representation so hot, and animation. Oh it's like, God. you know what you're doing. You're so ruining me much. forever. So much. You're going to make me want a hot goth, goth girl who's fucking mean to me. Uh, but I've also. Pieces of shit. Yeah. But I've also had a crush on literally every woman who's ever been on Saturday Night Live. Every woman. Oh, they're every all woman. great. Name yes. any, like name yeah. any woman on set. Nora Dunn, sure. I had a crush on Nora Dunn. Jan Hooks, you bet I had a crush on Jan Hooks. You know who I feel like people don't talk Dratch? about enough? You know I crushed on Dratch. Uh, Cicely oh, Strong. Dratch. Is Cicely Strong. She's amazing. Gorgeous and strong talented crush. and amazing. She, she can just, sing. I love her. Whenever they do yeah. the musical ones, she like she just, just gets out it. there. She yeah. does, you can tell she's such a theater nerd. She does dialects and stuff. I'm just like, Cicely Strong, I see you. Yeah. I see you in theater club. Well, it's yeah, like funny 
funny women in general, any oh, yeah. funny woman, yes. Madeline yes. Kahn. When I was a kid, I had oh, a crush on Madeline Kahn. 100 Specifically percent. as yes. Miss White from, uh, Clue. from Clue. I just, I was Clue just watching Clue the other night. Ooh, she's Clue so hot in Clue. Is the best. Flames. Flames, Flames on the side, side of, of my, my head. head. Burning. It's one of the funniest Burning. things. Burning. <laughs> Yeah, any, yes. wo- any woman who's ever been funny on film. Uh, Terry Gar and Young Frankenstein. Terry Gar. My Young God. Frankenstein, just Those amazing. fucking old. Oh, we're so yeah. old. So old. Uh, I'm trying to think of what, I mean, they're de- I, I don't know if I have a really good answer to this. I mean, Scully, but it was, also, but Scully I mean, was a big one. That's not weird. But that's not weird. weird. That's the thing. It's that's not like weird. Jillian Anderson's just, fucking yeah, hot. Yeah. Jillian Anderson's so hot. Still, she just she's, keeps getting she's hotter. She's only gotten hotter, yeah. It's weird. Oh man, that recent uh, I forget what magazine she was in, but she's got like that. She's got that real the devil wears Prada hair right now. Yes, yeah, yeah. where she does like the ASMR. Ooh, so good, so um, good. Uh, I definitely uh, women on the cover of covers of Piers Anthony novels when I was twelve. That was a, that was a big one for any van for me. that looks like it could be driven by a wizard. <laughs> <laughs> You there, wizard. <laughs> What's that on the side of your van? Why right. does my lady love? <laughs> In her chainmail bikini. <laughs> her bosom is exposed. Uh, yeah, I was. I, I read a lot of uh, Piers Anthony and Dragonlance novels yeah, when I man. was uh, 10, and pretty much any chick on the... Co- oh, uh, it's not weird, but uh, I remember being very into this, uh, the cover of this one Piers Anthony book. It was from his... Ah, oh, fuck, what is it? It's the... Uh, uh, incarnations of immortality okay. series where it's like the first one is about death and the idea is there are all these kind of roles in the universe like death and fate and time except they're actually just people who get kind of inherit these roles and the okay. first one is about death so a guy is he's, he finds himself in a situation where he's about to die and de- he sees death coming for him and he shoots death and death dies and then he has to become death. It's a Santa Claus situation, but for death. <laughs> That's right. That's exactly correct. Yeah. And then the Santa Claus. The Santa- I, be- <laughs> I believe it was the third book. I took the the from the Santa Claus and I accidentally put it in front of Joker. Shit. I used oh. up my quota of thus. <laughs> uh, I think the third book in the series might have been the fourth, but I think it was the third. Was about fate called with a tangled skine. Sure. Uh, and there's such a, a dork. A very man. And I say that as a, a dork very to a dork. Yeah. Illustration on the article uh, on the cover of uh, With the Tangled Sky um, by Piers Anthony in the Incarnations of Immortality series. The Incarnations of Immortality. Uh, de- by the way, Death from Sandman. If I could make any of my oh, cartoon, yeah. my cartoon crush is real. Yep, that's death from one. Sandman. I mean, any personification of death. In my most recent Sims 4 game, uh, I was doing the Black Widow Challenge uh, following the adventures of Stabitha Kilman, mm-hmm. who is my, my leading lady. And, you know, you fuck every guy in town, you marry him, and then you kill him, and then you Love decorate it. your bedroom with the urn. But then death keeps coming, and you can flirt with death, but you cannot fuck death. So that's my narrative here is, you know, she's just killing him to get death to come over and so she can flirt with death but like, never like you know what that is a great autobiography title for you <laughs> Layton Gray you can't fuck you death you can't fuck death <laughs> oh my god that's beautiful that's your that's actually your epitaph yeah. it's true that's actually going on your I'm gonna make sure <laughs> you can't fuck death <laughs> put me put me in your will and I will make sure just just put down that I am to take care of the headstone oh but you have your ashtray I almost so maybe you can't. Okay, fuck listen. Death. I almost we mentioned this every episode. I almost wore, wore my sweater uh, with the skeletons boning on it, and I was like, Audrey will be there. Mm. So instead, oh, I thank wore, you. So instead, I wore my more appropriate one, where it's a man with a bunch of swords shoved him, which she didn't see. <laughs> Great. Yes. Um, no, right. she, she was too busy showing me Luigi. Anyway, uh, uh, <laughs> weird crushes, pro. We're oh, pro weird pro. Crushes. Yes, you're good. I have my one, and oh, I yes, realized. Please. Yes, right. Of course. It is the weirdest one because I'm embarrassed to say it. Oh, even better. <clears throat> When I was a child, my parents, for some reason, let me watch all the Austin Powers movies. <laughs> <laughs> We're off to oh. a great start. Oh, I want to guess this so bad. Okay. <laughs> you can guess it. Is it Gold Member? <laughs> Please no. say it's Gold. God, God damn it. See, Brian, think more about my brand, my general persona, the art that I create. Uh, Just really think about it. Let's see. Do I remember the Austin Powers movies well enough? Let's okay, see. fuck it, whatever. Was it, okay, no, just it, say it. was it number two? It wasn't no, number two. You guys are the guess- Dr. Evil? You guys are guessing men. Oh, gotcha, okay. gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, oh, it was it was his nanny. <gasps> nope. Doctor. Uh, okay, Dr. okay, stop guessing, okay, stop okay, guessing, stop okay. <laughs> guessing. It's, I had a little portable DVD player and I would rewatch them and uh, it was the Fembots. The Fembots, oh, sure. Yeah, okay, right, yeah. it's they'd shoot out of oh. their tits. Like that That was one that as a child, I rewatched that pretty obsessively and was like, why does this make me feel weird? So yeah. that's my weirdest Because those one. Fembots were fucking hot. They were so hot. That's why. It's true, but watching it 
now it's like, oh, this is very dated, isn't it? <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, here's the thing. I guess I get to read a thing. That's exciting. Hi, I'm Eddie, he, him, 23, and I was wondering if it's appropriate to develop crushes as a bit. <laughs> <laughs> In most of my workplaces, just retail and food service jobs, I truly admire most of my coworkers, and it's become a recurring gag in my life to express my admiration as if I liked them. It's nothing problematic, just a simple thing like, thank you for being a friend, or you're so handsome slash pretty slash smart, but it's gotten to the point where I myself can't tell if I actually do like them, or I'm just trying to be funny. Maybe I am just lonely and throwing things to the wall to see what sticks. Wait, is this email just like, is it okay to have friends? (laughs) Yeah. Is it cool that I express my emotion to my friends? Uh, And not to make fun of you, emailer. I think this email is very funny funny to me and it's very sweet, but it's like what we were saying earlier. It's like, I guess with friendships, you sort of have like a mild crush on all of your friends and you respect them and admire them. And you and it's nice to say nice things to people. Oh my God, yeah. It's it's great to say to a friend that you, and it's hard, but to say to a friend that that you genuinely love as a friend, not not in any romantic way, just be like, I think you're great. Thank you so much for being in my life. There's nothing wrong with that. It might, you know, not everyone can hear that and not turn it into a thing, but I think that's a wonderful thing to say to people. Especially if you do it with everyone and it's not just like you're singling out. This yeah. yeah th- then, it, then it's weird. If it's I've, just I've person. definitely had people in workplaces, like work friends or whatever, where our, our bit is that we pretend to flirt. You know what uh-huh. I mean? Like we all have that. Like, yeah, uh, like for that, sure. yes. our bit is we pretend to flirt or we pretend like we're in love with each other. And like, but we both, here's the trick. You got to make sure. That everybody you're doing this with, Eddie, knows it's a bit. 100%, yes. Yes. You got to make sure that they don't think you're genuinely flirting with them and they don't want those advances. Because much like the uh, the overly large tip we talked about before, only you know your subtext until subtext is stated and becomes text. <laughs> That's exactly yes. right. And there's a, a, a maxim by one of my podcasting idols, John Hodgman. Mm-hmm. Is he on who, a, like a sexy cover of that? No, he should be though. That's guy's fucking hot. Um, uh, He's like where, teller hot. Yeah. <laughs> where he says, if it's not fun for everyone, it's not fun for anyone. Yes. And... I think that is really, really true. Uh, I might be slightly misquoting that, but the point is, is just because you're having a good time with it doesn't mean that everyone is having a good time with it. And if everyone isn't having a good time with it, cut it the fuck out. Or if everyone's having a great time, then you just have friends. Just have friends. And that's great. Yes. You have a bunch of hot friends. Yeah. And it's like at the part of the end where it's like, am I just lonely? Am I just like putting feelings into a box because I need to put them somewhere? Maybe, but that's a separate question, Eddie, and that's <laughs> a separate situation. And, yeah. But I would say the other extreme version of this is if you are like legitimately pretending to have a crush on someone and you don't, that's evil. That's actually evil. Yes. So like, make sure they know. Definitely don't do that because that's really, really uncool because that person then could start reciprocating mm-hmm. and then it's just a really bad situation. So don't yep. as a bit – pretend to have an actual crush on someone like and this it kind of comes down to tone Mm -hmm. really and body language and all sorts of other ineffable things but like i think that also means just don't lead people on yeah 100 don't lead people on and then ghost them and also you can just and also you can say (laughs) something experience with this (laughs) if you're just what no (laughs) also if you're if you've been doing this for a while and you don't know if somebody thinks whether that it's real or not you can always say like hey you you know I'm doing a bit, right? Yeah. Like, we're cool, right? Like, you can always say that. Lower the flowers behind their back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All yeah. right. Okay. All right. This one, will, one, one more. This will be our last one. Hi, Leighton. Hi, Brian. Hi, special guest. Oh, that's I'm, me. I'm Alex, she, her, 20 years old, and I'm in a very odd situation when it comes to my crush, he, him, 27 years old. I'm currently in a friends with benefits relationship with my crush, but it's more complicated than that. First off, the most common definition of friends with benefits is friends who casually have sex, right? Well, if we go by that definition, he and I aren't friends with benefits. We've gone on what are essentially dates. He's constantly caring about my emotions and my well-being in general. He has held me while I cried on multiple occasions. I tell him everything, and I feel safe and cared about when I'm with him. Oh, and also, we don't have sex. We've never fucked. We just make out in his car. And there was one occasion where we rented a hotel room, and we just messed around for a bit, watched TV, and ate snacks until we fell asleep together. There's a lot more to this, but I can't include those things due to them being very personal things. So long story short, there's a lot of mixed signals in the whole situation. I know for sure I love him. I've put a lot of thought into it. He knows I have feelings for him, but I'm also 95% sure that this isn't going to go any further than what it is. 
I've thought about ending things between us, but neither of us are being hurt by this situation as far as I know. He hasn't shown any indication that he wants things to end, and I don't want things to end just because I feel a little confused sometimes. But am I doing the right thing? Should I continue to put effort into this, even though I know it's not? <laughs> Anthony's making a gesture. <laughs> Should I continue to put effort into this, even though I know it's not going to end the way that I'd like it to? Anyway, sorry if this got a little too heavy or anything. Here's a picture of my cat to lighten the mood, and then it's a cute cat. All right, go. He's a coward. He is a coward. He is a coward, and there is somebody being hurt by this, and it is you, because you do, even though you're not incredibly hurt by this yet, you are already sensitive to the fact that you are in a relationship, you are giving a relationship's amount of emotion and work and energy and physicality. He is reciprocating it, and yet at the same time telling you that you're not in a relationship. And you said you love him. This is a yeah. this is a bullshit situation. You literally. I would call this. You also, literally, I want to know why. I want to know why the sex hasn't happened, and I have something. I have a feeling that it has something to do with him being afraid that if he sleeps with you, he's in a relationship. One hundred percent. I totally yeah, agree with that. Re reading this, it's just like this is what dating is. You guys are dating. You're yes, dating. You're dating. You're but dating, without, but you haven't had sex. But without the commitment that he needs to do to actually make that a thing, because if he knows. Because based on what's, I feel like there is so much missing here. Mm -hmm. yes. Also, there is the age difference, which I don't want to harp on too much, but. Not remind, remind me of that. 20, 20, 20 and 27. Yeah. No, I mean, not huge. It's not huge. But okay, but considering big, the context. But considering the context. Yes. That's it's big. big. No, I think, and at that age, especially for a 20, as the 20 year old, to date a 27 year old, that's, that, that, I think that's a sizable, but not insurmountable difference but yes. i yes I, but if the situation wasn't this guy's being emotionally immature with somebody who is in love with him yeah different no mm -hmm. that's true uh i this might be too strong a reaction i don't like this guy i don't like this guy i think he's uh i think he's using you i think you need to uh set not even an ultimatum you just need to say look either we're dating or we're not i think personally you need to get out of this. This does not feel like a good situation for you. He seems manipulative, and I don't like what's going on yeah. here. Because if he wanted to be with you, you guys would be together. That's correct. It, be with somebody who is as, as excited to be with you as you are to be with them, and if they're not, get the fuck out. And yeah. also, if this guy is acting... Now, it's hard to tell from this email. If he's dating someone else... This is a completely I feel, fucked up situation. I feel like that's, and I feel feel like like that's, that's subtext here. You know what? Yes. I've also been in this situation. I've been this person. Don't, if, if that's what that dude is doing, uh, oof. Yeah, and we don't, we, don't, we don't know that, but it certainly feels like there's something else going on here. The, and yeah. the, the, the tone that I get is that she is softening and protecting him a little bit, and that's, that's yeah. fine because it, these personal things that, that you're thinking you can't share are probably his things. And you don't feel like you you can cross that boundary, and we get it. Yeah, and I think what's going to happen is you're going to say we're either dating or we're not, and then he'll try to ratchet it down to friends. But what you That's really right. but what you really need is you need like a few weeks off from this person it, to get your least, head clear. I would say maybe even longer. Yeah, yeah. I, I, the, it, you, you're putting a lot into somebody who's not given who's not given as much. Back. You're being completely strung along here. And and the thing is, even though you feel like it's it's still good and you're still okay, the the real the real shame here is that you're putting so much of your emotion into this person that you're not leaving yourself available for somebody else. That's right. And you are- Or yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Yep. So that's what we think about that. We yeah. also think you're wonderful and we don't mean to be harsh. This is just our- Yeah. Right. It's, on it. it's just when you're in that, and I've been you in this situation many times, unfortunately, and I wish- over and over that somebody had been like, what the fuck are you doing? You're being taken for a ride. So- Take it into purview. Yep. yep. Take care of yourself. Use some of that energy on yourself. This dude's no teller. That's all I'm saying. Oh, who is? <laughs> yeah. No, nobody. Even Penn's no teller. Oh, Penn wishes he could be teller. He's been riding teller's coattails for years now. All right. <laughs> 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 now that's a button. That's a <laughs> so we're going to move on to our next segment. Hold on, wait. I got to okay. wrap up emails. Yes, please. Thank you, everyone oh. who sent in an email. We read all of them. We really appreciate you taking the time. And we hope that with, that you know, even the people that we didn't answer, that maybe this gave you some insight into your situation and the things that got better. People that we answered, hope it helped. Yeah. Um, let us know Let us know what happens. Hit us with an email. Uh, L-E-I-G-H-T-O-N-N-I-G-H-T at gmail.com. That's Night at gmail.com. Thanks, Brian. You're welcome, Leighton. <laughs> 
Okay, great. All right. So our next segment is called, and I'm about to play the theme song right after I say it, What's Poppin'? What's Poppin'? What's Poppin'? Anthony, what did you think of that theme song? I think it was wonderful. Thank you. I enjoyed it. Thank you. Quite a bit. Yeah. I agree. It sounds it sounds like it was written by somebody with a PhD. <laughs> I would know who you're talking about. <laughs> What's popping? Anthony uh, is sucking up. All right. Um, so what we do here is just real quick, we're going to uh, recommend some pop culture thing you're into these days. And as our guest, you get to go first. So Layden and I can think of what we're going to recommend. Oh, wow. So the way that you do this is instead of you going first, you throw me under the bus as the guest. That's correct. <laughs> got it. Got it. Got oh, it. And I got no, I got nothing. Let me just check my email and see if I got a what's popping thing. on. The, oh, no, you're, you're going to hate this no, next segment then. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> no. So uh, I guess the thing that's been taken up. Uh, no. No, because it would be some to- it would be some one of these terrible reality shows that I watched over the That's last. That's fine. That's fine. I, recommend, no, I recommended Ninety Day Fiance a few yeah. weeks ago. No, because we already we already discussed it. And here's something else that I've been into recently is um, I just got back into Shadowrun. Oh Y'all wow! Play some Shadowrun. I actually haven't. No, Shadowrun is D and D for people who like cyberpunk stuff. Mm-hmm. So oh, I remember it. There's still orcs and elves and stuff like that and wizards, but they're also like hackers and they have guns it's very it's like a 15 year old boy's notebook i was a spell <laughs> um but it's it's really wonderful it's uh, a little more technical to play than D D is so like D D has been very simplified for the um for the sake of storytelling mm-hmm. which is wonderful and mm-hmm. it's a very strong component of it and that's what makes D D great but what i like about Shadowrun is it definitely inserts a bit more of like the fiddly mechanics and strategy of gaming back into it and i've also been more into cyberpunk aesthetics than high fantasy aesthetics yeah um so it's been fun i got to play uh i got to play a session with some friends of mine who have a shadow run podcast uh shout out to fun city um and it was really really great to actually sit down and be able to play shadow run again i got and i get i got real into it like i bought the new source book for like the new edition and like it's got such good lore and like it really like leans on all of that good Gibson esque cyberpunk what, stuff. Did it? It's it's an eighties thing. Is that right? It started in the eighties. Yeah, because like, I remember it being concurrent with Spelljammer. Mm-hmm. Like right, I love okay, Spelljammer yeah. too. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I've been I've been getting back into tabletop a lot more recently, which has been wonderful. Um, but Shadowrun, cool. So play it with your friends who enjoy D anD D and uh, a lot of math. <laughs> <laughs> That's Layton. a very specific uh, person. Do you want to go next or should I? You have to ask me. Oh, sorry. That's right. I forgot. I didn't I did do it with Anthony. Here, I'll say it now and we can pretend I said it before. Anthony Carboni, what's popping? Love it. Great. Layton, what's popping? Um, it's a combination of media because pretty much the only thing I've been consuming lately is in anticipation of Animal Crossing New Horizons. I've been replaying Animal Crossing New Leaf mm-hmm. and I've been coming back to my, you know, 60 plus hour Stardew Valley town. Uh, on switch and so i will trade between those two when i get bored and in the entire time i've been rewatching all of 30 rock in the background which Ooh. has mm-hmm. been a long enough time that i haven't rewatched it it's not like the office where i'm sick to death of it because it's my favorite and i've rewatched it dozens of times as i'm sure is a universal experience for uh, people of a certain age but just like i heard my neighbor the other day listening like in the hallway i heard the office coming out and i was just like Maybe I'll just knock on their door. <laughs> just to watch it together. Maybe the guy, it sounds like they're getting close to the dinner party, which is the best yeah. episode oh, of The not, Office. It is 100% the best Maybe episode. I'll yeah. just sit and like watch the dinner party. Would I would know, argue that If I brought ice cream, would, like, would they let me in? I was literally watching dinner party bloopers two hours ago. Oh, they're the best. They're the best. When Michael pushes the TV into the yeah. wall. And they're just going to can't stop from cracking up. <laughs> there was a, uh, a couple years ago, Rolling Stone, maybe it was last year or two years ago, Rolling Stone did an oral history of the oh, yeah, yeah. production Ooh. of Dinner Party. Really? You got to read it. It's oh, send so good. Me. I will. I Sorry. will. I, uh, but yes, 30 Rock. You took me by the hand, <laughs> made me a man that one night, <laughs> everything's all right. <laughs> oh, I'm seeing that on the monitor. It's so bad. Sorry, Brian. No, it, it's fine. It's <laughs> anyway, fine. anyway, Thirty Rock is also anyway. Good. Thirty Rock. What is am I so living? Good. A farmer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the most like tightly written comedies, and I feel like much like everybody's seen Parks and Rec or The Office, nobody watched Thirty Rock. <laughs> 
<laughs> which we'll say, much like Arrested Development, has aged very poorly, but... They've got some attitudes about some people and things. Yes. Ooh, they're rough. But, oh my God, the jokes, the jokes! It's, there's so, there's so many per minute. It's just so densely packed. The music works with the show and the pace. It, Alec Baldwin piece is shit, but he is perfect. Oh, he's so great. Show. He's yeah. so good. Yeah, it's the first se- the first season of that show is just such perfect television. It has this sort of thing where like as you go into the later seasons, um it gets it turns into a Bugs Bunny cartoon. Yes, yes. totally. It, I was watching the Leap Day Williams episode. Yeah, on it gets Leap real yeah. Warner Brothers towards <laughs> the end. But that first season is just like, wow, what a smart, like fast paced, incredible comedy. I remember mm-hmm. when I first started watching 30 Rock when I was in like middle school ish. And it's like Kenneth is immediately your favorite. But at the time, I just really related to Liz Lemon and rewatching it. Yeah. I'm realizing how foundational that show is to my sense of humor and like mm-hmm. how many. 30 Rock-esque jokes there are in Dream Daddy. But now that I watched it, I'm like, you know what? I kin Jenna. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Liz Lemon's kind of a jerk. Yeah. She's kind of a self-involved jerk. And they lean into that later on in the show. Oh, yeah. I love that episode where they have, like, the new female comic who, like, really over-sexualizes herself. And then Liz uh, tries to call her out. (laughs) It's, what's her name? It's Christina Miliotti. It's, uh... It's Christina Milioti from like Broadway and like How I Met Your Mother and that really good Star Trek VR episode of Black Mirror. Oh my God. Yeah, that's her. Yeah, that's Christina oh, Milioti. She's amazing. Yeah, she was in a show called A to Z that got canceled real quick and it was so good. Oh, Henry Zabrowski was on that show. Mm-hmm. Anyway, 30 Rock while playing Stardew Valley. That's Love good it. times. Amazing. Brian, what's popping? What's popping for me is the. 1980 Grover Washington Jr. smooth jazz album Wine Light. Oh, jump in a lake. And <laughs> that's the most Wait, that's there, the most Brian thing I've ever there heard. There was in my a single life. email that at the end mentioned <laughs> your music from last time. Oh I, really? It's, I'm gonna performatively okay. no, shuffle. Go on, papers. go on. Uh, you've heard at least one track from this album, the Grover Washington Jr. slash Bill Withers song Just the Two of Us. Yep. Which is a great, great fucking song. So Bill Withers uh, I think co wrote it. And sings on it, but the rest of it is just so Grover Washington Jr. is a is a saxophonist, and he you know started in like maybe funkier jazz mm-hmm. in in earlier on, and then at some point in the late seventies switched to smooth jazz, and he's a fucking amazing instrumentalist. And these albums, like all smooth good smooth jazz albums, they are the best produced thing. Okay, Layden's handing me a piece of paper. What does it say? Sorry, we have breaking news. Yes, <laughs> closer to your love, fucking rocks. That's right. Because last week I recommended the Al Jarreau 1981 album, <coughs> Breaking Away. Which uh, do you think anything good was made after 1983, Brian? I was born after that, so fuck no. I mean, I released a couple albums. <laughs> <laughs> uh, got him. Uh, but yeah, this <laughs> album, him, like the playing's great. It's so cheesy. It's like it's exactly the kind of thing I would have hated 20 years ago. I mean, like absolutely loathed and now i've listened to it so much that audrey sings along to the uh to the melodies can i it's ask you this great. yes please is it the me. kind of smooth jazz album that you could slow down 40 percent <laughs> and put uh to a, a still picture of an empty mall and make it like my favorite thing on youtube and maybe there's like a fig leaf and then there's an old like a statue yeah. and also it sounds like to quote a john darniel tweet from a few days ago like it's been sitting in a bucket of warm water yeah. for two days i want say, that warm water vapor say, yes. wave dude the album's called sitting Wa- in a hot bucket of fiji here <laughs> i'm gonna show you the cover of this album and then please do uh but you're into vapor wave because i fucking love vapor wave i have really good vapor wave mini discs actually well i'm gonna show you the cover of this album and i want you full to on releases mini disc releases what the f- wait no mini disc okay. is mini disc is the format of vapor don't wave. get me into this oh i'm gonna get you into mini discs you're do gonna you, love it do you listen to haircuts for men i've been really mm-hmm. into haircuts yeah for yeah, men yeah, yeah 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 <sighs> I nearly, like went, I nearly went to uh, St. Pepsi was in town okay. last night. Oh my God, I saw Blank yeah. Banshee uh, at the Echo. It was so good. This is very low res. But here's the... <laughs> We're very cool, Brian. No, I know. <laughs> Are you as... <laughs> We're going to collect our mini discs with our mechanical keyboards. And Are listen you to as fucking... cool as the cover to Wine Light? Wine Light! Oh! Wait. Ha ha, you guys can't see it. No, I wish I could. It, like, it, somehow it's not. Oh! Amazing. It is a saxophone glistening next to a glass of white wine. Now this is Vaporwave. Okay, you know what it, my favorite thing is? That the hue thing that and you saturation, pulled pull that to purple, and that is Vaporwave. <laughs> the DPI of this image it's is like, like two. two. <laughs> <laughs> I love that we both went yeah. for two. 
Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, I don't know why it's not clicking so we can see the real version, but it's. I uh, we get the vibe. You should it's make a so vaporwave good. album. You could make a vaporwave album in twenty minutes. I bet yeah, I could. I, I take your Alger, take your Algero and your Grover Washington records and Grover make, Washington Jr. Gro- sorry, thank you. Sorry. His father, uh, as we all know, hated jazz <laughs> and refused. He said, "Don't you do was. it." I don't know. <laughs> Not in the Washington family. <laughs> we're pia- we we repair the pianos. Okay. We don't play instruments. So I take so those two things. You take those two. You find yourself like it's it's like DJing. It's like so you're gonna find yourself a good sample. You're gonna fucking slow it down to about forty percent. Yep. You're gonna put. You're gonna add some like good hiss to it. What you want to do then is grab some uh, some samples of Navi from Ocarina of Time. Yep, mm-hmm. right. Throw those in there. Hit it with a bit crusher. Hit it with a bit Always. crusher. Like several times. Um, you know what? I'm Throw gonna like do? a good like <laughs> like a low five beat. You mm-hmm. want it? Yeah. So the, the people listening layer. to this. Podcast have already heard it, but I just put vaporwave music under the thing you just did, which is describing how to make vaporwave music. Oh, to be the Anthony of the future. <laughs> <laughs> I, I brought my like little mini cube that I bought off of eBay for Brian, and he actually made the theme song for What's Poppin' on it, and it was infuriating to watch him do it because it was just so fast. It's like fuck you for being talented. That's my little vaporwave machine. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I don't think you wrote that last one, though. Yeah, I did. No. <laughs> it's called For Anthony. It's brilliant. I love the, uh, the the imagery of having this very tiny keyboard sitting on a larger keyboard. That's right. It's keyboards all the way down. Yeah, it's Russian nesting I was about keyboards. to say that, and I was like, I'm not going to condemn myself to being this dorky on this podcast, that's, but yeah, you did it. it is. I did it. Uh, we need to do our last segment, because yeah. this is going to be our longest episode yet, probably. Sorry. No, it's great. God, we it's almost it. like we have an interesting you guest whose company we um, enjoy. Leighton, do you want to explain what this next segment is? This is a segment mm-hmm. that I've stolen from my family uh, that... Fuck, I just... I Your was, family's podcast? I was introducing that, and then I remember that James Lipton fucking died, which has nothing to do with it, but James Lipton died. He did die. Yeah. That's sad. He did die. Um, I didn't know he was 93. I didn't either. I, I would have guessed I he was, was like 70-something. 70 70. Yeah. 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 Great. Interesting chat. Dude, if, if you guys wanted uh, listening to your dad talk simulator, then there you go. You got it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that first, got of all, first of all, you're very rude. <laughs> 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 and so he's just going on with the talking to your dad. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Just calling your dad. Anyway, there's so much loud laughing in this episode. It's, I it's told you. Like I it. warned you. I, I warned it. you. About I love me. it so much. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so peaches and lemons is a thing that my aunt and uncle do with their nieces, where they go around the table every night at dinner and they give a lemon, which is a thing that was you know kind of a bummer during the day or the week, and then three peaches, which are things that they're excited about or grateful for or you know just feel good about. So it's peaches and lemons. We do three peaches and one lemon, and you start with the lemon. Peaches and lemons. Peaches and lemons. Do you want? Uh, do you want to kick it off? Do you want me to kick it off? Sure, because I was thinking about it, and now I feel like we need to let guests know beforehand. Be like, hey, what? Uh, think of a bad thing, and then yes. think of good things. Also, right. okay. Um, my, uh, lemon, mm-hmm, oh, mm-hmm. my lemon is the thing that we talked about last week, which is a, uh, our dear friend Jory showed me the world of um, Jim Carrey is the mask transformation oh fetish art. It's <laughs> The look of wonder. How is that a lemon? <laughs> <laughs> this better be going somewhere totally different because this rules. I couldn't think of a lemon, so I did a thing that I'm really excited about. <laughs> but so, okay, the reason, the reason that it's a lemon. That's the opposite of a lemon. Okay, but the reason that it's a lemon is because by the nature of doing this on a podcast, if I say it on a podcast, it's no longer special. You know, like there's a thing with internet phenomena where you find the weird thing and then by, it's like, you can, you can keep it. This only has like 10,000 views. Like nobody else can see it by, by virtue of saying it on a podcast. Now it's out in the. the... Now it's going to have 10,003. Anyway, go on DeviantArt and look up Jim Carrey's The Mask Transformation Art. Um, and Anthony, there's a video I will show you after this. It, it's bad. It's very bad. <laughs> anyway, so that's my lemon. Um, peaches, one optimum napping conditions today it was nice out i had my mm-hmm. balcony door open had mm-hmm. my dog on me had a nice you know my laundry was going so i had a good 40 minutes uh it was just great good napping two i received a five dollar vhs i bought on ebay today that Look is at you. 
a six-hour block of Bigfoot and paranormal ghost sighting programming <laughs> oh, hell yeah. that I've just had on in the background while I've been cleaning. Third peach is that I'm really excited to see Anthony because the last time I saw him was when we saw Midsommar's director's cut, yeah, which yeah, was yeah, a yeah, while yeah. ago. Are, are we allowed to? Are we allowed to discuss the the uh, the, peaches? the, li- the life situations that were happening around that, or no? Yeah, go for it. Oh, okay. I was going to say, <laughs> we had both just gotten out, like literally just gotten out of relationships. Oof. And uh, our friend called us up and was like, going to see Midsommar. It's the director's cut. You should come. And I was like, is this the movie for me to watch right now? <laughs> uh, turns out, yes, it was. Oh, big time. Well, because the thing is, is I saw the original cut while I was with someone and relationship is a strong turret. Very, um, hmm, who was the person who was talking about shitty friends with Ben's? It was like that. Okay. Anyway, so that was over. Friends with Ben's? I love that. Don't, no, 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 no. Um, Frenies with Bennies. That's how we say it. That's how the cool kids say it. I just say FWB. Frenzos with Benzos. Anyway. <laughs> I mean, I'm a Frenzo with Benzos. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I love me some Xanax. Not recreationally. Do not, not take recreational. them recreationally. Take them for your clinical anxiety. We only take the pills that were prescribed. When we feel like we're dying. Mm-hmm. Although I am a doctor and I will prescribe anything you're for not, anyone. You're not that Stop kind of doctor. Stop. And anyway, you're not allowed to do that. I but can I do watched, whatever I want. Thank you. Watch the ori- <laughs> That's exactly what a fucking PhD would say. <laughs> I watched the original cut of Midsommar while I was in the thing with the guy, and I was like, this is great. And then I watched the director's cut afterwards, and I was like, this really be hitting different. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, if you can see the director's cut. Mwah. 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 Did, you, did you see the original Chef's cut? Chef's kiss. I did not. Ooh. So uh, the only version I, I've I seen. I actually think the director's cut is better. That's what I hear. The, the pacing works better because the whole thing is slow instead of just the third act being slow. That's what I heard is the second act adds a lot more of like, Here's why this makes sense. Yeah. Like, not to the place as much as the relationships. Also, a lot more thesis chat. Thesis chat is so yeah. good. You Love didn't see Midsommar. You would thesis fun. chat was was his original podcast back in the day. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it was him talking to himself. And it was one listen. Brian, um, you would fucking hate Midsommar. <laughs> I bet I would. Oh, I think you would definitely hate it. Yeah. Yeah, like but a it's lot. Why would, I, why would I hate it? I mean, it's the thing that we talked about. It's, uh, it's gore, bad gore. Bad gore. Um, Can't handle gore. Like like rough for me gore, and that's yeah. saying something. Yeah, yeah. No. And it's also but, very- But um, when I see rough for me gore, I get like unhinged excited where I'm like, I felt something. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, only take the pills as they're prescribed. <laughs> and- uh, <laughs> I'm taking all 400 milligrams of them as prescribed. Thank you very much. Um, Was that three? Did you do three? That was three. That was three? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Do you want to go next? I can't think of a lemon. Okay. Uh, The the, the lemons are actually always the hardest Lemons are hard. I've had a pretty decent week. Which is wonderful. I mean, the whole point is like- I love that I don't have a lemon this week. Okay. If you had asked me a couple weeks ago, uh, I I sure would have had some lemons, but this week I'm good. Great. Okay. Passing on the lemon. I can pass on the lemon. This I'm is historic. This is historic. We have not done this yet. Yeah, I don't think we should force people to be upset about something. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. Pretty good week, guys. Pretty good week. That's Sorry, great. everybody. Okay, great. No, I love it. Uh, three peaches. Three peaches. Number one. Uh, got a real good ride on the Vespa in with my dog the other day. What? Uh, it was like a, that this first is official cool guy stuff. Yeah. It was a couple. It was a couple days ago when like it was it was sunny but real cool. Mm. And I, I brought the, uh, I brought the. It's it's not really a Vespa, but if I say scooter, people think of like a bird or a yes. lime right now. Yeah, yeah. So it's like a Vespa style. And I have a carrier on the back where my dog sits, and he puts on goggles. Dog's name. Uh, the dog's name is Dagger Cannonball Thunderfang. And we will be posting a picture on our Instagram. If Dagger that's okay is with you. very yeah. cute. Yeah, it's fine. He has a he has an Instagram. He's at Dagger. He's okay, a little influencer. Great. At Dagger. Um, he's uh, <laughs> my my ex used to work at Instagram, so my dog is an influencer. Um, what first? He's a uh, he's a very sweet boy, and we went on a nice nice long ride to the park. Aww. And we got a little coffee. It was great. Nice little day out with the pup on the bike. Um, let's see, peach number two is uh i can't go into too much detail about it but um peach number two is there's a lot of cool new work stuff i had a really good meeting and really neat stuff is going to happen later on this year and uh, money's going to keep coming in and that's always wonderful congratulations hey Hey, we love that and then um i guess i guess number three would be i uh i got i think I've been talking about how I got to go to like a lot more game nights recently. It's been a solid run of game nights. Mm. And mm-hmm. I had a good one a couple nights ago. And after I'm done here, I'm going right out for another one. Nice. So lots wow. of good game nights. I enjoy game nights and they've been happening at a decent clip. That's great. So those are my three. I love it. 
All right, my turn. Uh, lemon, uh, I, I get it pretty good. This is a minor, minor lemon, but mm-hmm. uh, about a month or so ago, I uh, yeah, finally put my own website up with a web form, and I said, contact me if you want me to come give a talk. And I was like, oh, I'm going to be able to go give talks at colleges or something, and then literally zero of them have materialized. Oh. And uh, I just want to go... Have you put it out there? Have I have you... put it out there, but I don't want to harangue people too much. I have so much other stuff that I feel like... I, I, I don't want to be in constant self-promotion mode. Sure. So I kind of did a big push, and then uh, my manager, quote-unquote manager, Brent... Uh, followed up with whoa, oh, roasted, Brent. This roasted. Brent Lilly. Followed up with a if bunch of people. If you're listening, Brent Lilly, I swear to God, no, go ahead. F- future pod- guest on this podcast yeah, no, for Brent, sure. Brent, Brent is the legit best. Uh, Seriously, yeah, I love him like an estranged brother. I don't say and that because I'm contractually obligated no. to it as soon as he is my friend. <laughs> no, Brent, Brent is, is is awesome. He this guy has been nothing but good, uh, good stuff in my life, and he's followed up with people, and none of them have actually happened yet. So I'm a little bummed about that. It makes me feel slightly unwanted. Is if I'm it being perfectly honest? A slow time of year for this kind of talk. I don't. Th- it, mm. it might be now, but I yeah. don't think it was when I put it out there in January. Do you do you have videos of you doing talks online? Well, this is the kind of thing. I mean, just academic lectures, but these wouldn't yeah. be you know like research type talks. Basically, I want to try to do more like public speaking, mm-hmm. public talks, yeah. that sort of thing. I would say having like footage of it out because I've done. I'm. I like doing it. I'm glad to not be doing it as much this year because traveling kills me, uh, and I also. <clears throat> freak out over doing talks. I don't know if you're like that public speaking. No, I love doing it. Oh, God damn it. I'll get there someday. Um, but like having GDC putting the videos of like my talks out, like it was a huge uptick yeah. and like, mm-hmm. come speak to our thing. That, that's honestly what I need is like one, w- one good example that people can see of the kind of talk I want to give. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it's a really minor quibble cause I have so much other fun stuff that I, I love that I'm doing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but it's always, but you know, I, I wish it had happened in a way that it's not happening right now. Yeah, sure. It's always you put yourself out there for something new. Yeah. And, and you it, were you, you were expecting a response that you didn't get. I get that. Well, a lot of people wrote and I don't mm-hmm. want to say a lot of people didn't write, but to actually make the talk happen where, you know, you can get someone to cover the expenses and pay a little bit of money yeah. and that sort of thing. Well, that's a trick with academic said, speaking, right? Yeah. Well, that exactly. So tons of people wrote in and said, I would love for you to come, but without any, you know, mechanism for mm-hmm. making but it But also happen. I can't pay for it and it's in my base. Yeah. And the audience is right. only going to be me and my dog and my sock That's right. Puppets. And I, look, I'd love to go, you know, go do talks that are just like to a very small group of people. But, mm-hmm. you know, I got to no, get out there. But no kill rooms. Yes. No, ideally no abattoirs. Well, one kill room. <laughs> One kill room. Maybe just one little kill but room. the puzzle has to be pretty easy. Um <laughs> like uh, you know, I have I have some friends that do academic speaking and they they say the same thing where it's like I lo- I would love to do it more and it's very fulfilling. But it's also schools don't, schools ain't got money, man. I don't schools know if you know much about the United States. Oh yeah. Schools ain't got money. But a lot some student groups do and some, stuff like that. Yeah. Anyway, 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 it'll, it'll happen. You, yeah. It's it'll not happen. this is not meant to be a promotion. It's just a thing I was kind of pumped yeah, about yeah. this. Guys, anyway, guys hire where's, Brian. Where's the web form? What give, give the URL to the web form? <laughs> it's Brianweck.com. Boom. Bam. That's it? Hell yeah. There aren't many Brian Wecks out there. There's like one or two. What do they do? Uh, I don't fucking care. <laughs> Got him. Second or uh, first speech. Uh, first, speech. first speech. All right. I'm going to go through these real quick. Yeah. Last night, I went to see the 35th anniversary tour of Pee Wee's Big Adventure wow! at the Wiltern with Paul Rubens doing a little bit afterwards. And it was one of the coolest fucking things. I love that movie very deeply. Yeah. There were 2,000 people there all laughing at the same jokes. That movie on the big screen, uh, I saw it when it came out and, you know, in, in 85. Uh, I saw it again last night. I've seen it many, many, many times in, in between. But I can ne- I had not seen it on a big screen for 35 years. Uh, Paul Rubens' acting in that is one of the greatest comedic performances so I think ever on, on, on screen. It's so great. And he afterwards, it wasn't a Q&A. He just kind of talked about the movie and said some behind the scenes stuff. He was charming and funny, and the movie was uh, it was just beloved by everyone there. It's When it came out, it felt like a weird underdog. And now it is just, I don't know anyone who doesn't love that movie. Yeah. It was such a wonderful experience to be there. Also, we got a good Danny Elfman. Uh, good Danny Elfman. He, yeah. yeah. Well, it, Elfman I think, score. so they actually, they showed a thing, which was before and after the show, the movie, they played uh, clips from MTV's premiere party at the Chinese theater here in LA. Oh. And it was Pee Wee in character, accosting 80s celebrities, including, and all of these were real, uh, Mr. T, David Lee Roth, Eddie Murphy, 
Fleetwood Mac, uh, Banana Rama. Uh, <laughs> let's see who else. Morgan Fairchild. Um, uh, tons of like eighties eighties celebrities. Alice Cooper. And uh, Mr. T. The, what a wild, <laughs> what a wild time capsule. At the, what a oh. strange, what a strange, so just weird. like, here's the 80s, idiot. This is what it is. <laughs> They're all coked to the gills and Pee Wee Herman's interviewing them. I don't know. Here's the A-team guy. He, what? He was, oh, Quiet Riot. He was interviewing Quiet Riot. Sure. And uh, one of these rocker guys, I forget who was wearing some really like loud pattern jacket. And <laughs> Pee Wee goes up to him. This must be an old vaudeville bit. The Pee Wee goes up to him and goes, nice jacket. Where'd you shoot the couch? <laughs> and it was so funny. Uh, That's and, awesome. Uh, yeah, Brilliant. it was great. Uh, number two, uh, Danny and I are going up to uh, to Portland this weekend to Ooh. shoot a new NSP video for a Exciting. song I'm really excited about wow. for the upcoming album. So it's going to be uh, on location outside of Portland. Uh, that'll be really fun. Uh, and number three, and this is kind of a meta beach which is that my family has started doing peaches and lemons at the dinner table. <gasps> oh, really? Because we uh, told Audrey about it, and we decided to start doing it. And tonight, before this, we had always said, yeah, how was your day? And I started asking tonight at dinner, how was your day? Because we had done peaches and lemons over the weekend a couple of times. And I went back to old habits, how was your day? And Audrey said, Daddy, no, we have to do peaches and lemons. And so now this is a thing my family does. I'm That's feeling right. a thing. I'm having an emotion. And she told she actually tonight said that she didn't have any lemons. Yes, for her no day. lemons, no lemons. And her peaches were very cute. It was just like I got to play with this friend, and I had a good time, like a five year old kind of stuff. It yeah, was very adorable. So oh my God. that just that's great. I love it. So thanks to you, Layton, I have a thing that makes my family happy. Finally, fuck, finally, Whoa. one thing that makes his family happy. <laughs> That's right, because it sure ain't me. Got him, got uh, him. Anthony, thank you so much for for being here with us. Oh, today. thank you for this having me. A real me. joy to have yeah. you. Yeah, this Seriously. was great. And uh, where can people find more more about you? Uh, I'm at a Carboni on all the things. So if you're on a thing, look for a Carboni. That's me. Look yeah. out your window at night into a into a tree. It's That'll me be you right whispering. There. <laughs> you go to the <laughs> beach. The night. You pick up a show. Yeah. You call. Whisper my name to a bird and set it free, and uh, <laughs> it will come back with me. How? I don't know. I don't know. It's Makes it the, happen. It's just the world. All right. We're Thank, done. Thanks for listening. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Thanks for this bullshit. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to say thanks for this bullshit. I meant to say thanks for listening to this bullshit. No, that's great. <laughs> Did you get that? <laughs> thanks for this bullshit. Bye. <laughs> Leighton Night is produced by Brian Wecht and Leighton Gray. Our next live show is at the Lodge Room in Los Angeles on March 23rd. You can buy tickets at LeightonKnight.com, www.L-E-I-G-H-T-O-N-N-I-G-H-T.com. I do know how to spell my own name. Please follow us on Twitter, at Leighton Knight, on Instagram, at Leighton underscore Knight, and you can email us at LeightonKnight at gmail.com. <laughs>